Hello everybody and welcome. Some of you have asked me to, well, talk a little bit about how I do this cinematic stuff I do with some of my videos. And yeah, I just thought I'll give you a really rough, uh, off the cuff, without any scripting or planning uh, video, where I just so show you what I do and what you can do to make your KSP videos look better. So let's go. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with something that you can do directly from in-game. For instance, if you right-click on any component, you can use the Aim Camera option. Let's do this for these launch clamps over here. Okay, and now that we're ready, let's uh, press F2 to uh, get the UI out of the way. And then launch the vehicle. And yeah, as you can see here, the camera stays static, of course, because uh, we told it to. Uh, but let's try this again from another viewpoint. So if you want to make uh, multiple angles, uh, you will probably have to reload again. So reverting to launch or quick loading and quick saving will always be something that you will need to do, if you use this method at least. Okay, let's get that launch ramp out of the way. Okay, that didn't work as expected. Well, at least it's out of the way. Okay, once again, getting the rocket ready for launch. And you remember one of these iconic images, I think it was from Apollo 13 or something, where they had the camera on the launch tower, and... Yes. Now the mighty Saturn-ish 5 is gone. Well, the tower is a little bit wobbling now, but who cares? Okay, what I want to show you now will require to get to only the topmost stages. There we go. And then we're going to use the cheat option to get this into orbit, because we're not going to do a real mission here, I'm just wanting to show you what I meant with a few things. Okay, for instance, if we once again aim the camera over here, and then decouple our, uh, what's it called? Uh, command module. We can sort of simulate Oh, well, now the sun is in the way. We can sort of simulate a vehicle flying away from a stationary object. Something like that. So this is already something that KSP offers you straight out of the game. Another thing that's possible is to use the chase camera. And for that, of course, we need an aeroplane. So if you press the V key, you can see up there that the camera says free, chase, locked, auto, whatever. Let's use the chase camera. Uh, I know there is a mod that uh, offers an improved chase camera that uh, the game does not. But there is already, as I mentioned before, something in the game that you can use if you don't ruin your vehicle. Yay! So the chase camera is supposed to stay behind your vehicle and follow it around. And then you would need a vehicle that could actually fly well. Again! Alright, this here should offer us better results. Let's get back to the chase camera and fire her up. I also didn't lose the engines, which is good. So the camera should follow me around when I buy my airplane. This is good for keeping orientation. Otherwise you would have to need the right click and uh, move the mouse around a lot, which I usually do. I tend to forget using the chase cam. But if you turn off the UI, you once again 
can get some nice visuals of the jet flying around. And hopefully not crashing into a building, at least not yet. Okay, but this is of course just child's play. These are just the very rudimentary things that you can do within the game, among which also are using the right click to make some sort of a circular motion around the uh, jet. You can also double right click unless you have deactivated it, which I usually have, and then move it around more smoothly uh, by just moving your mouse and be gentle with it, otherwise it won't look as good. So once again, chase cam is activated. So we're following... Yes, we are following our uh, jet plane wherever it wants to go. So yeah, this is something you could use for cinematics if you so desire. But as I mentioned before, there is something else. What I usually use to make some cool cinematics in Curl Space Program is a mod called Camera Tools. Uh, if you open it up, you get a new UI like this and you can choose between three different modes. Stationary camera, stationary camera dogfight camera and pathing. Okay, let's start with the stationary camera. Um, you can select, this thing basically uh, mounts a virtual camera somewhere in space or in the sky and follows your vehicle along its trajectory. So what you can uh, do here is you can set the flyby position. Let's start with that, uh, which means it, uh, it you define where the camera should be, or you can select auto, which is what I usually do. And then you can set your target, uh, which is good to uh, have a fixed point of reference. And let's take the service module over here. As we can see, it has done so. Um, Let's move up top. Zoom is basically the zoom factor that is happening during this uh, process. So if you select auto zoom, it's kind of will zoom in before it passes the camera, zoom out and so on. Let's activate that. We have this margin over here. You can select audio effects, which will switch up the audio uh, when your vehicle moves across the camera and camera shake, which I usually don't use because it makes things look weird, but I want to uh, show you what happens. And let's speed this up a little bit to 45 meters per second of relative velocity to the, ca uh, to the vehicle. Down here we have home and end as the two buttons that activate and revert the camera. So. Uh, you can use this mod without having to uh, display the UI. Okay, let's launch this rocket, get the UI out of the way, and then let's see what happens when we press our home button. There we go, we've zoomed in, now we get the camera shake, camera is shaking, and we're now zooming again a little bit. And that was a flyby with the stationary camera. Let's reset that zoom again and the camera shake because I usually like to do it like this. Much smoother, isn't it? There we go. And you can get a better view of the vehicle. I mean, the zoom, yeah, sometimes it could be cool to use it to sort of make a more action-y uh, type of flyby, but yeah. Also, uh, the camera is tracking the prograde vector of your vehicle, so if you are not pointing prograde, uh, it will not look as good, but something like this, yeah. But still, it's okay. Okay, so you can get some decent shots with that as well. All right, let's get rid of this real quick and also of the launch escape tower and make our orbital maneuver a little bit quicker than it would have been in reality. Okay, moving towards the prograde vector because that will look better on screen. There we go. Alright, another thing you can do is, if you 
do not have a target selected like I did before. We clear the target and then you get, uh, you should choose a maximum relative velocity that is way lower than uh, 45 meters per second. Why? Well, when you activate the camera now, it basically stands still in space. It will not follow the vehicle, but you can set it up as no, the name says, a stationary camera. So you can just wait here while the Saturn V goes bye-bye. Or you can set it up like this. Where is my vehicle? There it is. Use the middle mouse button to move right, left, forwards, backwards. Use the mouse wheel to move up and down. And the right mouse button to pan or Well, not really pan around, but move around. So let's see what happens. Yes, and then you have a vehicle moving across the screen. I could have uh, set the angle. The uh, I could have set the angle a little bit better, but yeah, I think it was fine this way. Okay, once again, pressing the end button returns to the regular camera. You can also set it up like this in front of the right in front of the vehicle to have some sort of cool. Uh, flyby type of thing. There we go. This works really great with very large vehicles, of course, because then you have that sort of space balls effect. We break for nobody. Yeah. All right, and now I want to show you the real cool thing. I'm going to skip dogfight camera because I actually never use that. And I'm using pathing. Okay, what can we do here? Uh, first off, we have to start with a new path. There we go. Then, move your camera to sort of where you think a good starting point would be and select new key. Zero is okay and you just have to click apply, that's it. Then, once again, use middle click to move right, left, up, forward, backward, of course. Up, down is done by the mouse, key, uh, the mouse wheel and right click would move the camera in another direction. Then we move forwards to, uh, we're almost on the side of the vehicle. We say new key. And now we uh, look at the time uh, information. Time is the timestamp in seconds. And I want this to be a little bit of a slower uh, flyby. So I'm using four. We, uh, yeah, we add four seconds to this. Then we move to the side because we want this to uh, sort of pass us by. Now, now it's a little bit tricky to move the camera to have it really in the right angle. Okay, once again, just one second added. You can see here uh, five does not mean another five seconds added, but it is the absolute timestamp. So yeah, we got that right. Then we move to the back of the vehicle. There we go. Make it a little bit more tricky. Okay, new key. And let's make this uh, five seconds, nah, even longer, seven seconds. This, this was going to be a long take. And then we move around to see the engines. Right in the middle. Okay, this also can take a few seconds. Let's make it three and then we move far away upwards and a little bit away there we go so we have this nice closing shot okay how long should we take for that well maybe also seven seconds like we did in the beginning okay how does that look like there we go we're flying towards our vehicle we're moving around a little bit we're panning across the hull then we're going to set our sights on the engines and finally move away you can see the transition between one keyframe to the next is a little bit uh can be jarring if um, you have a very very hard change in uh, angles okay 
Um, but I want to do it. This was not epic enough for me. And the reason was it was too fast. Let's set this at 40% uh, of the velocity. So you don't have to adapt uh, the keyframes themselves. You can just set the path timescale for the entire path to act a little bit slower. This is also something that I like to use when I have vehicles with a lot of parts involved, so the video kind of gets a little bit stuttery in the FPS department. And then I really slow the time scale down and speed it up in post-processing so that I smooth out the frame rate a little bit. Imagine this with some great epic orchestral music and some narration of some guy with a voice three octaves below mine. Then you have an epic video. And we have moved out of the way. Well, this could have been better. I should have moved away even further in the beginning, so this is not cut off like that. But this is just here to give you an idea of what you can do with a mod like Camera Tools. Uh, as a, I've shown you the Chase Camera before, so um, there, and I've said there are uh, other mods for improved Chase Cameras. Um, if you use some of those, tell me in the comments below. Otherwise, this concludes my short information tutorial uh, thingy about camera tools and other ways to make nice cinematics in Kerbal Space program. I hope you enjoyed this and if you do, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.